Good day. Um, from the Spermatology Laboratory at the University of the Western Cape, we now, in collaboration with the master student, Shannon Kaiser, will introduce you to yet another very important sperm functional test. This is a test that measures both the acrosome intactness as well as the acrosome reaction. A totally new kit has been developed by Microptic which contains all the basic elements to perform this and in addition software which will automatically detect whether a sperm has an acrosome or not. So it's extremely important that in testing the functionality of spermatozoa that one knows that sperm have good acrosomes so they would have intact acrosomes but it's also important that in the vicinity of the oocyte they actually can get rid of these acrosomes undergo the acrosome reaction in order to attach to the oocyte and penetrate the zona pellucida. So we will now stepwise demonstrate this um, very very important uh, technique to you and um, we will show you subsequently all the different steps. We will actually demonstrate the technique now. First of all we prepare two tubes, two Eppendorf tubes. Why two? The one is of course for the control and the other one is for the acrosome reaction. So first of all we take a semen sample and we've diluted it. We're going to dilute it ten times in a typical capacitating medium of your choice. In our instance we prefer uh, to use um, HTF capacitation version and that is now added to the Eppendorf tubes after we have thoroughly mixed it and diluted the sample about 10 times and please note that this dilution relates to a concentration of approximately 20 million sperm. If the sperm concentration is very higher, 40 or 60 uh, million, then of course dilute more. And if it's less, dilute less. Um, as the case may be in fertility clinics. So mix the sample well, which is now a mixture of capacitating medium and semen more or less at a dilution of 10 times. This now needs to be incubated in an incubator for about three hours. And you can see also done at 37 degrees centigrade. Once it's incubated um, uh, over this three hour period, we will treat one of these tubes with a medium that will bring about the acrosome reaction. Okay, now we're going to show you how we incubate with a calcium based medium to bring about the acrosome reaction. So the tubes have now uh, already incubated for approximately three hours and in the one tube <coughs> we add a calcium based medium that we will put into that sample uh, and <coughs> we will need to incubate it for a further 15 minutes um, before we stop the reaction with 70% alcohol. So there she adds the calcium based medium <coughs> and with the control it can now go back to the oven for incubation for 15 minutes. Okay, now we're going to uh, stop the reaction uh, by using 70% alcohol, but we also need to add that to the control. And so we add 100 microliters of 70% alcohol to both these solutions. The one that's the control and also the one that has the calcium based medium in for the acrosome reaction. So the action is now stopped. We just mix it well again. And now we can immediately 
show you a very important component, how to get it on a slide. Of course, the easiest way would be to just make a normal smear, like one would make a, a sperm smear for morphology. Um, but um, in order to, to conserve chemicals and to make it viable, we just put a 5 microliter drop of the medium on the slide and on the other one we put the control. So we have two droplets there and so for each of these one could actually do control versus the uh, acrosome reacted sperm. So the one problem now is that we cannot dry this in the oven we just dry this, air dry this, um, until it's completely dry. So the best is to do let it dry overnight. We wait overnight for those droplets to be completely dry. And let me show you how it looks like. You can see here I actually have two at the bottom and two at the top. And you can see they almost appear as little white, whitish discs. So those, those are now completely dry and the next step now is to fix it in 95% alcohol which is being pre-cooled to 4 degrees centigrade then it goes in and immediately it is taken to the fridge where it is kept for 30 minutes. So fixation time then is exactly uh, 30 minutes at 4 degrees centigrade in 95% alcohol. Fixation is now complete, so we've taken the Copland jar out of the fridge. We remove the slide carefully. We drip dry it, make sure all the alcohol runs off. And we put it at like uh, 40 to 60 degrees for it to completely dry. This doesn't take a long time. The next part will now actually involve the staining for the acrosome. And um, also, if there's no acrosome, we also need a counter stain. So we're also going to use a counter stain. And this process will follow now. But very important. All of this needs to be performed in the dark. I have actually now darkened the room to about the level that you should be staining at because all these chromophores that we are, uh, that we are using uh, are very light sensitive and so you need to work in almost darkness. And so of course it will be silly to demonstrate the entire technique uh, in, at this level of darkness. But please remember everything that follows now must be done in this level of darkness. From here on we will show it in the light of course, otherwise you will not be able to see it. Okay, now we're going for the procedure whereby we will make sure that we can, if there is an acrosome, that it will show up under fluorescence microscopy, um, as well as when there's not an acrosome, we'll be able to see then a sperm cell in a different color um, uh, with fluorescence microscopy. So the first uh, staining procedure is by using a hoofst based medium and we take approximately 5 microliters of that and put it exactly on that dried drop. That drop is now dried and we put it straight on that. Now that hoofst based medium is, um, has been quite quite a bit diluted. We've diluted the working solution about one to, th to three times. So in the dark, remember all of this happens in the dark, we leave it there for seven minutes, for seven minutes and um, we then will show you subsequently what we do in terms of the washing procedures.
The roof staining is now completed after seven minutes. We decant it, and we immerse it in PBS, just very, very gently. And now follows a really important step. We dry it until it's almost fully dry. All that needs to be slightly damp would be actually that area where the sperm are. This is very important. We found that the stain, to really act well, needs that damp environment. So, let us assume now it, has, it is fully, almost fully dry. And the next step now is to stain it with this lectin, um, which is a PNA-based medium. And we do it in two steps. Because it's slightly damp, there's a dilution effect. So we first put something like 20 microliters on the sperm spot. And we wait for five minutes. Again, remember, it's all in the darkness. Okay, we're going to accelerate the process. We try and decant most of that after five minutes. And now we're going to add about 40 to 50 microliters of the PNA based medium. on our two droplets and now the problem is we have to stain for one hour but in one hour um, it may actually evaporate and then you may not have the full staining time correct so we've just got a very simple humidity chamber it's an ordinary slide box and we've put wet paper inside and then we just put the slides uh, like that on top and we close it and there's a high humidity all the time because for now it must stay there in the dark for one hour the staining process has now been fully completed we open our humidity box the drop is still there and we now put it just one immersion in distilled water and now we can let it dry or optional we can fix it in 4% paraform aldehyde um, it just allows you to keep the slides slightly longer for like 48 hours um, and it allows you a little bit more time to study the, the, the acrosome reaction so after a period of about 15 minutes of uh, fi fixation in paraform aldehyde. We dip it once in distilled, in, uh, distilled water or PBS. One dip PBS, one dip distilled water, and we now dry it thoroughly. So it now needs to be totally dry before we mount it. And we're going to mount it in a special medium. Once the slide is totally dry, we can now mount it in a uh, anti-fading medium uh, under the fluorescent beam one tends to have a lot of fading occurring and so it's important to use an anti-fading medium and there are many types of these available so a drop drop each and we can mount it with a cover slip and it is now ready for viewing so we will show you this part uh, subsequently where we actually go to the fluorescence microscope and at the fluorescence microscope we will show you the selection of uh, cubes, filter cubes that we have to use um, and we will show you exactly how to use the correct wavelengths uh, in order to be able to see the acrosome fluoresce uh, like a bright green and the rest of the spermatozoan um, like a bright blue. Please note that this technique is not in its original form where one would distinguish also between live and dead by different colors of blue because of your host-based staining. 
This is simply meant for the acrosome reaction to see acrosome intact sperm versus acrosome reacted sperm. We have now mounted the stained slide um, with the anti-fading uh, medium. We put it on the microscope. We move to more or less where our spot is, where we put down that 5 microliter droplet, and which is now being stained. We select here the correct filter cube, um, in this particular instant a, a tri-band filter. Um, and of course, we're going to use a 40 times objective. Um, and so this is also an advantage that we don't need to use oil immersion, so we can capture hopefully more sperm per field, which will also make the automated analysis a bit faster. We move that in, and of course we now switch on this super high pressure mercury lamp. This is the controlling unit. We activate the lamp and subsequently it heats up this mercury bulb inside here in this mounting and then the rest of the setup is the typical epi fluorescent setup which operates like this through the various neutral density filters if you want to use them and of course the correct set of cubes to give a specific <coughs> excitation and in the end emission. So we are now ready to search for the spermatozoa. We open up the fluorescence beam and once we've seen some spermatozoa we open it up to the camera, again using an ACE-1300 camera, which is the camera of choice for this particular technique. And we can now view the software, how to analyze the acrosome. So, we have opened the SCA software, and we will now show you the acrosome, the fluoracro module which is here, and we select, of course, the human sperm analysis using Flow Acro. So we enter the Flow Acro program. We have already set up the configuration, and um, it is a lot of details which we will not going to show you now. We can go straight to the Analyze button, and immediately seeing the dark there is the size of the S1300 camera. We can go directly over and analyze the moment we have fluorescent sperm on the screen. In this particular instance, I'm going to make use of the import function and import the quality control file, which is the moment you import it, it, it is analyzed. And when we now go back to results, we can actually view that field. And you can see how extremely well it has actually seen uh, the sperm with acrosomes and those without acrosomes. Those with acrosomes have a green block around it and you can clearly see the green fluorescence. Um, whereas this one has a dark blue where the acrosome is supposed to be as you can also see here, also see there. That is a partly reacted acrosome but because it's mainly blue it will be seen as reacted which is correct. And again, this also. So, if we have to take the actual blocks away, can you see how easy is it indeed, even with the naked eye, to distinguish all these really clear green acrosomes versus these ones which are either without an acrosome or acrosome reacted, um, <coughs> as is the case here. If we put the show the analysis again, you can clearly see how well the actual program detects correctly whether a sperm has an acrosome or not. 
if we now go back to the results section we can of course then see a little window showing us the results and of course we can do several fields unless we uh, uh, until we have approximately 200 spermatozoa and finally we can compare the um, sample with acrosome intact or the control one versus acrosome reacted to one that has been exposed to the calcium uh, based substance and um, uh, accordingly when we view the results between these two there should be ideally about 15 percent difference between the control acrosome versus the acrosome reacted spermatozoa so we can finally create a report and this is extremely useful as it shows us a pie diagram a little table and also actually proof that the acrosomes have been correctly detected and this has all been done at a 40 times using a 40 times objective okay here are three more examples that we have analyzed fresh and let's view the fields you will be able to see here that in the red boxes again those that are acrosome reacted if I remove the boxes you will, can very clearly distinguish also that these are the green acrosomes and those are the blue ones surely and correctly identified next field that we've analyzed fresh and here you can again see all these that are clearly acrosome reacted and finally here one that um, <coughs> that we have analyzed which is a, was a little bit more complex but it also analyzed successfully so this brings us to the end of this um, analysis of the acrosome at the magnification or using an objective of times 40. Again I want to thank Shannon for being such an excellent um, help here with the technique. She uses it in any way almost every day and we hope you've uh, learned something and we hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.